Welcome to another edition of Eat My Shorts. Today we're going to talk about a budget rifle versus an expensive rifle, what I consider important upgrades to it, and mandatory parts. We'll start with the muzzle. This right here uh, came with the rifle, I'll be honest with you. It came with the upper when I bought it on sale. It's a combination of a muzzle brake flash hider. I have not tested this gun yet because Dad had health trouble and whatnot. But it looks effective. People seem to like them. Okay, this is not going to be a night vision or a go to war setup anyway, so it doesn't really matter to me. 416 M4 profiled um, stainless steel barrel, one in nine or one in eight twist, and it's 556 NATO. I, I do 556 guns because 556 is military standard. We have what's called a cheese grater railed handguard. This one's not too bad, it won't cut the piss out of your hand. It does take M lock, so mount yourself a light, right? Flip up irons. These are plastic, actually, uh, Fab Defense. Shout out to Chris from Northwest Discord. Uh, he sent these out. You know, you have a side charger upper here, right? Now, this one, I don't know how well you can see this in the light, has a lot of rough tooling and machining on it, and while it's effective it is kind of out of spec compared to my bootleg bulk carrier group to be fair the bootleg cost more than this entire fucking upper did so there's that uh pro about this it's easy to use with arthritis especially if you're an ak operator of sorts uh con you need a tool to take the bolt out so if you have a breakage in the field you better be carrying the right size allen wrench to get that pig fucker open Lower, Anderson AM15, bought it used from Tom Lockbars, shout out to Tom. A2 pistol grip came with it, that's getting changed as soon as Rockford gets to the mail, uh, I don't know if and when he's going to do that, shout out to Rockford Ordnance, he's good peeps. Trigger is, I believe, a white oak mil spec plus, which is basically your standard trigger pack. That's what came with the lower, it's nice enough for what the lower is, you know, it's a good trigger, and it's kind of an expensive one, actually. So, I mean, if you want mil spec, this is the way to go. Castle Nut is not staked on this build, but it's in tight enough right now. It'll do for the test firing. I'll have to dig out the punches and do that later. Uh, standard Smith Wesson M&P butt, you know, M4 six position, collapsible. CV Life sling because that's what I had the budget for. This lower came with one mag, a 30 rounder. I just happened to pop a 40 in it because it sits in the corner. Bushnell Red Dot. Love-hate relationship with this thing. Hope it runs. If it doesn't, I got it for free on sale, basically. So, you know, we, we shall see. The point of this rifle was the Poverty Pony Budget Blaster series that Terribly Tactical did, right? The idea of making a fighting rifle on a budget of $450, that's what this gun came in at for every fucking thing you see here, including a magazine full of shells. Uh, I had the shells laying around, so I guess you don't count those, but they're not very expensive, I mean relatively. So this rifle is yet untested, it's unproven, I, I think it's going to run well because I've spec'd everything out to it right. Um, but. My thoughts is a broad overview of a budget gun versus a higher end gun like my DPMS. This is a $450 rifle versus a $2,000 rifle that's a custom build. Do I trust this? Yes, I do as of right now. Am I going to grab this one first if I start hearing weird shit going on and a bump in the night? No. I'm going to grab my DPMS because it's already set up. However, once this becomes tested, there is not a damn thing wrong in the world with a budget carbine. You just have to use good parts, put it together right, make sure it runs, and get the correct setup on it. This gun also weighs about 10 pounds fully loaded. My old A2 weighs like 7.5 fully loaded with a 20 round magazine. So take that for what it's worth. These modular guns are nice if you want optics, LPVOs, red dots, 
lights, laser beams, fucking toaster ovens, dildo dick mod attachments, whatever. And yes, those do exist. Fucking 3D printer crowd, shout out to you. And uh, basically, a good look at what I consider your bare minimum setup for a at least an introductory AR. Now, you can build these even cheaper now than I built this one, or damn close to it. So, you really don't have much of an excuse not to have one of these unless you live in a banned state, in which case, fucking move or break the law. So, that's where I'll leave you. Have another wonderful day, and uh, I'm sure there will be more bitching and moaning as the day goes on.